the moment every space enthusiast in the world had been waiting for, finally arrived today at Boca Chica, when the Starship soared into the skies for its second test flight. While most of us were not here for the launch of Apollo 11, and who knows if we will be here when humans embark on the journey to Mars, we can proudly say we were a part of the moment when the largest rocket ever constructed reached space for the first time in history. So, what happened during this historic test flight? Did SpaceX make any progress from the first attempt? Stay tuned to find out. Today, SpaceX conducted the second test flight of its next generation mega rocket, which happens to be the largest one ever constructed. The launch marked a significant moment as the massive vehicle ventured into space for the first time. Unfortunately, the excitement was short-lived. Following the separation of the rocket's stages, the enormous Super Heavy booster experienced an explosion. Subsequently, the Starship upper stage vehicle also detonated before reaching its intended altitude. SpaceX referred to this unexpected event as a rapid unscheduled disassembly. We currently understand that the automated flight termination system on the second stage activated unusually late in the burn, as we were progressing downrange over the Gulf of Mexico, explained John Innsbrucker, SpaceX's principal integration engineer, in a live webcast today. The immense Starship and Super Heavy booster initiated their flight at approximately 8 a.m. EDT, 1300 GMT, 7 a, m a m local Texas time, from SpaceX's Starbase test and manufacturing facility in Boca Chica. This morning, just north of Boca Chica on South Padre Island, a large crowd of spectators gathered to witness the launch. Their cheers filled the air as the orange glow from Starship's 33 first stage Raptor engines illuminated the plume of exhaust, marking the commencement of the massive rocket's ascent. Towering at nearly 400 feet, 122 meters, Starship holds the distinction of being the largest and most potent rocket ever constructed. Its imposing presence is visible for miles when stacked and positioned at the Starbase launch pad. This marked the second test flight for the fully assembled Starship, comprising the super heavy first stage booster and the Starship upper stage spacecraft. In contrast to the success of the recent launch, the initial liftoff on April 20th of this year encountered difficulties. The Starship launch in April concluded with a self-destruct command approximately four minutes into the flight, resulting in the rocket spiraling down and transforming into a smoldering fireball. One factor contributing to the unexpected disassembly in April was the failure of Starship's two stages to separate. To avoid a repeat of this issue on the second flight, SpaceX adopted a new approach, hot staging. In this technique, the engines of the upper stage start firing before the complete separation of Starship and Super Heavy. While not a novel concept, as it has been utilized in vehicles like NASA's Gemini program's Titan II in the 1960s and Russia's enduring Soyuz rocket, this strategy aims to address the separation challenge experienced in the previous launch. During today's flight, the stage separation of Starship took place as scheduled, approximately 2 minutes and 41 seconds after liftoff, and it seemed to proceed without issues. However, the subsequent explosion of the Super Heavy booster occurred shortly afterward. We're going to analyze that data and enhance the hot staging sequence, likely making improvements to the hardware for the next flight, stated Kate Tice, SpaceX's quality engineering manager in the live webcast. SpaceX had aimed to execute a soft landing of the Super Heavy in the Gulf of Mexico to evaluate re-entry and landing procedures. Following the stage separation, the Starship upper stage persisted in flight for a brief period. SpaceX had anticipated establishing signal acquisition with the spacecraft at its intended altitude of around 150 miles, 250 kilometers. However, telemetry from the vehicle was lost roughly eight minutes after liftoff, toward the conclusion of its own burn post-stage separation. During a live webcast, SpaceX mission managers, including CEO and founder Elon Musk, were eagerly anticipating updates. The spacecraft was not anticipated to achieve a complete orbit around Earth. Rather, it was on a suborbital trajectory, with plans to splash down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Our objective today is not to reach orbit. We're aiming for near orbit, explained Siva Paradvaj, a SpaceX operations engineer. He added that the goal was to attain a thrust profile resembling what would be necessary for orbit, while also achieving the energy level required for the ship to dissipate during re-entry. It's noteworthy that Starship's second test mission demonstrated improvement by flying for a longer duration and reaching a higher altitude compared to its initial test flight on April 20th, which encountered difficulties at stage separation and ended in an explosion. Despite the challenges faced, SpaceX deemed the second attempt a success. The final telemetry signal from today's launch indicated that Starship had reached an altitude of 148 kilometers, equivalent to 91 miles, surpassing the 62 mile, 100 kilometers, boundary defining space. Honestly, it's an incredibly successful day, despite the rapid unscheduled disassembly of both the super heavy booster and the ship, remarked Tice. That's fantastic. 
we gathered a wealth of data, and it will significantly contribute to our improvements for the next flight. The enthusiasm for Starship's progress extended beyond SpaceX and the spectators at South Padre Island. The success of SpaceX's new rocket holds considerable importance, influencing the timeline for NASA's plan to return astronauts to the surface of the Moon. As an illustration, the space agency has selected Starship as the lunar lander for its Artemis III mission, slated to transport astronauts to the Moon in late 2025 or early 2026. Importantly, SpaceX's ambitions for the colossal rocket go beyond lunar missions. The launch of Starship today was anticipated to pave the way for an increased launch frequency as more refined designs progress to the launch pad at Starbase. Presently, the test iterations of Starship lack the cabin or life support components necessary for carrying a payload or sustaining a crew. Nevertheless, SpaceX is placing significant bets on the success of this rocket. However, the focus for SpaceX now shifts to investigating the factors behind today's Starship disassembly and implementing measures to prevent a recurrence in the future. Efforts to establish the necessary infrastructure for Starship launches from NASA's Kennedy Space Center, KSC, in Florida have been in progress for the past few years. SpaceX intends to leverage the facilities at KSC once Starship becomes a regular part of its launch repertoire. At Launch Complex 39A, LC-39A and KSC, a dedicated Starship launch tower has been constructed and a crew access arm has been installed on the tower at LC-41. This addition is intended to support crew launches using Falcon 9 from various pads as Starship launches transition to the Cape. In the future, SpaceX may set a goal to conduct Starship test missions as frequently as once a month. If this pace is sustained, it could significantly contribute to certifying the vehicle for crewed launches in preparation for Artemis 3. SpaceX has a proven track record with its Falcon 9 rocket, which has achieved an average launch rate of more than once a week in recent years. Establishing a higher cadence for the company's new launch vehicle has always been an objective. Throughout the developmental stages of Starship, Elon Musk has consistently highlighted the vehicle's potential for rapid reusability. His vision includes envisioning the same Starship vehicles launching, landing, and relaunching multiple times a day. Musk aims for a future where this could translate into the possibility of hundreds of Starship launches occurring every week. After the initial test in April, it took SpaceX seven months to implement the required adjustments, regain regulatory approval for flight, and ready Starship for a second launch. Following the developments from Saturday's launch, which likely uncovered additional issues, the timeline for when Starship can undertake another flight is currently uncertain. What do you think? Can we expect to see a faster turnaround time for the next launch, or is SpaceX in for another long developmental phase ahead? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.